It's our great pleasure to welcome to our 2021 Online Trend Summit CEO and founder of Ethical Butcher, Farshad Kazmian. Uh, thanks so much for joining us today, Farshad. It's great to wel welcome you to our a virtual stage. Thanks for having me, Charles. Hi, it's a great pleasure to be in your program and uh, I'm grateful for the opportunity. Um, the impact of our current food system on the environment is becoming increasingly apparent, I think, to us all. Um, and from across the social, political and academic spectrum, there are calls for a radical think of our food system, including for us to reduce our animal protein consumption by eating more of a plant based diet. But there is a counter perspective that of eating maybe less but better meat, employing regenerative agricultural practices that work in harmony with nature. And as Ethical Butcher is a champion of this approach, I'm really delighted to be exploring this with you in more detail today. If you're participating in today's summit as a Trend Hub subscriber, you can find out more about this particular topic from this discussion in our 2022-23 trends framework within the Megatrend Future Saviors on Trend Hub. So tell us then, Farshad, what is the Ethical Butcher? So Ethical Butcher is an online butcher which is trying to change the nature of farming. We said beef, lamb, pork, chicken, and all of the usual cuts that you expect from your butchers, uh, but what we are doing here, we are very keen about the impact that the farming industry and the meat industry can have on the climate. Our farmers have been trying for generations to preserve the land and treat the animals well, but the market has not helped them. And, and uh, we give them the opportunity to operate according to their, you know, to their highest principles. We also give this opportunity to our customers to do their shopping, not according uh, to the utility bills, but according to their, uh, to their highest principles and, and their own ethics. We have lost the connection between humanity and nature. UK is getting warmer and wetter. Modern life has created separation and distance. We receive mixed messages about how we should live our lives. What is real, what is fad, and what is disinformation? We live in an accelerating culture. The new challenge is finding balance in how we live, work, eat, and play. We are searching for a new dynamic, a connection back to nature. The world around us is changing but human biology has remained the same for millennia. How can we expect to thrive if we don't honor our natural way of living? A lifestyle in partnership with nature, a new paradigm that constantly looks forward, but remembers and respects where we've come from. We've tried to control nature, not work with it, damaging the ecosystem we are a part of and the planet we live on. There is a movement of change, led by a handful of innovators and heroes. These heroes are farmers who are our suppliers, making sure that they safeguard our future. They're working with nature, not against, repairing the damage caused by industrial agriculture. We can produce food in a way that actually heals our planet, taking carbon from the atmosphere, locking it into the earth. Join the craft meat revolution. The main thing for us within the ethical bush and within everything that we do is to uh, connect people back to nature, and uh, and we want to show and prove that eating meat shouldn't cost the earth. And uh, we actually started this few years ago, where everybody was saying that you have to stop eating meat, otherwise, you know. Uh, Otherwise, you burn the planet. But now a lot more is coming to the surface that people are talking about regenerative agriculture. Uh, there is a famous expression between farmers that is came actually from the US, and now a lot of people are talking about it. It's not it's not the cow, it's the how. We want to show that it's not the actual product and it's not the actual food that can cause problem is how we produce, how we rear these animals or how we produce these vegetables. That's the problem. So the ultimate aim is to convert as many customers and as many chefs 
to use regenerative meats and also uh, vegetables. So I have to ask, Farsha, what was that light bulb moment for Ethical Butcher when where you went, oh, yeah, I've got, to, I've got to do this. I've got to make something of this opportunity that I can see. I started working in Smithfield Market uh, in, in the finance section of it, and I was not enjoying it. So I ended up selling meat to restaurants, and, and I had a couple of vans and driver, and, and, and it was good. But uh, I was kind of looking at... Uh, at what I was doing and I had no freedom. So I decided that's okay, I need to expand my business. So I came up with the idea of crowdfunding and whilst I was going to crowdfunding places to, to learn how that mechanic of crowdfunding works, I also saw a lot of companies were pitching for their meat alternative. Yeah, okay. And, and in all of their pitches, it was how bad the meat industry is for the environment and how bad you know, it will be if we don't do anything about it. And for me, it was a disaster because I'm thinking, okay, I've started a trade and I'm trying to expand this trade, but I never knew about this. So the more and more I hear about this and I started to look at it further and further, the more stressful it became. So what I did, the immediate thing I did, I changed my car, I got an electric car myself for myself and then i put myself into a lot of trouble because i couldn't charge my car at home and all of those but but then i learned it so then i met glenn so i wanted to make a film for my crowdfunding and I, glenn is a filmmaker so i met glenn and we put our minds together and then suddenly i come across as one of the you know farming groups that i am part of is pasture for life association it's one of the most beneficial memberships for anyone who is interested in uh, in farming. The amount of knowledge that they share across the board is fantastic. And, and I used to receive their email. Suddenly I receive an email that there was a research from University of Michigan uh, that said if ruminant animals managed correctly and under holistic land management practices, they can actually put more carbon in the soil that they can emit. And that for me yeah. was the was the light bulb moment. And I thought, okay, if we are going to eat meat in future, it has to come from good farms, from farms that, well, I know the word now, they are regenerative. Yeah. And, uh, and Glenn also being an ex-vegetarian for 25 years and being on the other side, he knew all of the counter argument and all of the arguments because he went to that tunnel and he came out and then and then he has seen both ends and and yes uh, so we came with the idea of the ethical butcher we did a crowdfunding uh, first crowdfunding we raised uh, we raised uh, about 350,000 pounds and we built a unit we built our website we increased our marketing um, then, uh, then our second crowdfunding a few months ago, we raised nearly 1.5 million pounds. And, uh, and yes, so, so we just continue building uh, on what we have been doing and, and hopefully uh, we, can, we, can, uh, we can pass some of our learning to others and they can continue and more people you know, come on board and, and collectively we do a better job. No, thank you for sharing that. It's a really inspiring story. I was really keen to understand where did where was that moment and thanks for bringing that to, that to life for us. My pleasure. Do so you work with farmers who um, practice regenerative and low intervention farming techniques? What does that actually mean in practice? The main principle here is to stop the harm. Grain production is a colossal environmental problem and it's one of the critical divers of global warming. Grain uh, is a monoculture that creates ecological deserts and requires vast amount of artificial fertilizer to remain productive. All of the pesticides, nitrogen, antibiotics, all of these that's that they are going artificially to land to, to make either the crops or the animal feed um, uh, more, uh, more productive, actually they're harming the land. And what we have to do in regenerative agriculture is to stop this harm. So no unnecessary antibiotics, no routine antibiotics, no 
uh, no chemical to the land. So taking basically everything back to the original and to the traditional methods that the farmers have, you know, generations before us used to do the farming, but at the same time using the technology and the knowledge that we have today to manage them better is just managing the land better uh, without adding anything and stopping the harm really is the principle. Um, understanding the principle of behind regenerative farming, but do you think it can be is something that can be achieved at scale? I think it can because the issue with industrial farming is that there are big mass produced farm owned by big corporations. And what we need to do, we need to take this back again to the way things used to be done hundreds and years, hundreds of years ago. So we're going back to smaller scale farms that they used to run like a community. So in that village, for instance, you have somebody who produces beef, somebody who does milk, somebody who does chicken, and all together, these are forming one small community. And if we can have that, smaller producers, smaller farmers, owned by you know family farmers rather than the big corporation, then we can produce local food at a scale. And I'm guessing that um, some of the bigger brands are also seeing that there could be potential in this. Obviously, we've got, you know, McDonald's are, have got a regenerative trial underway at the moment, PepsiCo, similarly. Um, exactly. And I guess that you probably know of other, uh, you know, other businesses and brands that are uh, trying it as well, experimenting with it to understand the scale behind it as well. Absolutely. And it's not only only beef and meat production. We are part of Savory Institutes, which are promoter of regenerative agriculture worldwide. And we are the regional market partner. And within that market partner group, which is called Land to Market uh, Programme, uh, we see a lot of wool producers, so a lot of you know, yeah. a lot of new companies coming to use the wool from regenerative agriculture, and also uh, and also for leather, for instance, Timberland is on the list, and, and they are trying to uh, use regeneratively produced uh, materials for the for their goods. So I'm understanding the principles behind regenerative farming, but ultimately, how is it better for the environment? It's all about. Uh, soil biodiversity and also sequestering more carbon if you look at like 30 40 years ago if you were driving in the countryside at night uh, you had to regularly clean your headlights but these days you're driving for day and night and nothing would come to hit your uh, headlights which means that we're losing this biodiversity and uh, and regenerative farming is helping to you know, to regenerate the land, to bring that biodiversity back. And also there is no tillage in, in regenerative farming, which means that keeps the soils underground, microbiological infrastructure intact, and also preserve the water. If you look at pasture, pasture must be grazed and eaten by ruminant animals, because if, it's, if it does not happen, it's like your garden. If you don't mow the grass, the grass grows longer and longer and, and dies. Uh, whereas, uh, so these ruminant animals, uh, are, in my view, they, they act as a natural grass mowers, if you like it, you know, more stronger roots in the soil, which is also helping to absorb more carbon and, and pump them or sink them in, um, in, the, in the ground. Okay, I mean, this, this is, sounds absolutely um fascinating but do you think these farming practices can actually go to a point where they can not only um be carbon neutral but even be carbon negative do you think i think it can be uh, and we have to look at the farming on its own because a lot of time and in a lot of studies wrongly i believe the farming uh, or production of beef is taking everything involved in terms of packaging transport producing animals all of these would put together and then it compares uh, it will be compared by you know something that's been produced in a manufacturer in, in a in a factory farm uh, and and i think that's a wrong comparison um whereas there are cases that, so so we have to look at the look at each section so transport for instance if we're adding the 
uh, the emission that comes from transport to the farming, that's strong. So with transport, we have to look at transportation on its own and see, okay, how can we use, you know, more fuel efficient cars or vehicles or trucks, or if we can use the, you know, the satellite technology and the mini robots to, to use on our farmland rather than burning a lot of fossil fuel on big tractors that you know that cover the whole land and um, so that's that's one example of it and uh, so we have to become efficient in every single part of, of everything that we are doing but looking at the farming only on its own i believe it can be um carbon negative there are examples of it uh, in the us uh, uh, there's a company called um, White Oak Pasture. There's a farm that they have uh, an independent uh, study done on what they are doing, and they are sinking 3.5 kilo of carbon per each kilo of beef that they produce. There are also some examples in uh, in Australia mm -hmm. where farmers actually are selling carbon credits to Microsofts. And uh, in the UK, I think the land has been really forgiving. So nobody, you know, has really taught or, and I, and I think that, you know, the practices in the UK are one of the, some of the best in, in the world regardless. But then uh, it's a starting. So for us, for instance, um, we are, uh, one of our farms, Chesford Grange, uh, is going through a, a phase of uh, study on their own. So the, we have done a collaboration with Region Agri, which is part of Control Union, mm -hmm. and uh, and they have done a study on their land. So they take a measurement reading of the land, the mineral, the soil, the biodiversity. And actually, Chester Grange is now the first and only uh, regenerative certified farm in the UK, which is certified under, you know, Region Agri Control Union. And the aim is that next year and the year after, hopefully if the farm meets all of the metrics that is there, then it's, we have a proof that our farms are actually carbon negative as well. And like you mentioned before, other people are doing the same. So McDonald's is going through another study uh, and and I'm, I'm sure there would be a lot more evidence to come we haven't got a lot because we never had the urge of looking into this section as you know as much as we need to we need to now but i'm sure there would be more studies coming out to prove that yeah well i think consumers will demand to uh, to understand that um, you know the information that supports the claim, I guess, so they can oh, make a positive choice. Absolutely. So you're the ethical butcher. How can meat be ethical? So what does ethical mean for you in the context of the ethical butcher? Ethics is not like morality. It's not like a divinity standing saying that this is good, this is bad. Ethics is about uh, connections and relationship. It's about all part of the natural environment working together, flourishing together. Atmosphere, biosphere, animal, soil, pasture, farms, farmer, community, customers, all in productive relationship, all flourishing together. This is the funding principle of uh, deep ecology movement, our way of doing business, uh, really, uh, really uh, restore the natural ethical balance. So consumers are changing. Why do you think now is the right time? What are some of those broader forces for change that means that consumers are ready now where perhaps they weren't ready before? I think that ethical wave has been growing for, for years, I don't know, for 20 years. It's, it's, now, it's now flourishing. Uh, the reason for this change, which I think I can, I can see it in our own business as well, is that we are becoming more and more aware of the uh, of the environmental problems that we have created with our industrial revolutions and our fast way of living our lives mm -hmm. uh, and covid was giving everybody a reason to just take a step back and look at everything that we are doing the way that we working the way that we are living the way that we are producing our food and and everyone 
I feel that we all trying to achieve and do a lot better. People are aware that okay, uh, the power of the money, how you know how they spend their money and and how they actually can vote with their pockets. This is where we actually share a lot of principles with vegans, for instance, because they want to do good as well. And and pre whereas previously, the in my view, the the thought was that okay to do good you have to stop eating one part of or you have to eliminate what one part of your diet because there was no other idea of okay how can that be improved but yeah. uh, but i guess at the same time that people have been bombarded by messages okay you have to do this you have to stop doing this you have to do this you have to and then the covid came and people had chance had a chance to try you know smaller producers uh, uh, things that they have never bought from supermarkets. We had a lot of times and experience that, you know, people coming online, placing an order with us, and they come back again, they say, oh, we never go back to supermarket again. We never expected this. We never, you know, we, for, we had forgotten the taste of mince, the taste of beef. Now, you know, we don't go back anymore. And, and all of these combined with all of the, you know, this awareness is creating an atmosphere for the move. And if you, for instance, looking at the Glasgow summit, uh, you, we will see that, you know, the whole world is awakening to, to the new era. And I think there is a revolution on the way. And, and I think in agriculture, we, you know, in the past, we had the industrial or industrial agriculture and uh, agriculture revolution, the new revolution in agriculture should should call them will be a regenerative revolution. Dare I say, almost the perfect storm, really, of factors and forces all coming together. That sounds like what you're um, you're, you're you're saying. I know that uh, product innovation is a key part of, um, of of what you do, and I know you've got your kind of core proteins, and you've done some really interesting things with collaborations. But I'm keen to explore what are some of those latest innovations and some of the things that you've got in the pipeline. One of the things that we always did try to do was not just to be a middleman or a salesman selling the product we were trying to create something and to improve and make everybody you know encourage everyone to think out of the box uh the first one i think i can give you an example is our soy free chicken mm -hmm. so uh even before we launched our website glenn and i uh we were looking at how we can eliminate soy from uh, the feed because it was in the news as well that you know actually in britain we contribute to the rainforest fires in brazil because all of the the majority of the chicken that we consume here are fed by soya that has grown in south america or brazil and we you know one of our one of our aims has always been to, to eliminate that from our chicken, the feed in our chicken. So we went to our, then our only two suppliers of poultry, which are really, really good suppliers, have been two of the best. That's why we chose them. And we talked to them, we said, guys, okay, we want to, uh, we want to, can we actually take soya off yeah. uh, the menu? And uh, they put us in touch with their, seat me and and the the conclusion was that no we cannot we have changed the biology of these birds and they cannot grow without soy because they need the protein it was not enough for us so we kept looking and we are a member of few farmers uh, forum so we sent advertisement and we went to uh, an exhibition or an agricultural show called Grandsville and and we met a guy who came to us he said okay i know about you guys i know you want to do that and i'm happy to try it for you yeah. and uh, so we did a trial of soy free chicken it was crazy because we had like three and a half kilo of chickens and then he had to improve the or change the diet and change the breed and on and then finally we came with the right size chicken great flavor everything good even pierre Kofan. He said, actually, this is one of the best chickens uh, that he has ever had and was as good as any good French poultry. Or That's French a great endorsement. Yeah. Yes, it was, it was great. And so that was that was the first one for us. Yeah. What we really love is that this year at Grandsville, the guys who could not try it, 
they came to us and they say, okay, we're now having our first trial of soy free chicken. And it was amazing for us. So we actually stopped selling any chicken unless it's either soy free or organic. Okay. We did this this year. Then, uh, then last year, after our soy free chicken, we received an award, uh, Butcher of the Year Awards for Innovation because of our uh, soy free chicken. Then, uh, then we said, okay, now we now need to do something else. So now, now we have been working for about a year and a half now on, on pigs to see how we can actually do that with, with pigs because they are highly dependent on soy as well. Yeah. And, and we went through a few trials and within about two weeks from now, we're now having our, uh, we launching our soy free pigs as well. Last week, we, we were very surprised because uh, we received another awards. We won a British farming awards also okay. for innovation. Uh -huh. And uh, we were all excited. Uh, and that was, uh, that was because of our campaign for Regenerary, which we did a start two years ago. Last year was the second year, and and the whole idea, like I said, it's not for us just selling meat. It's just creating awareness and encouraging everyone to do better. And the concept behind regenerate is that, okay, regardless of the chosen diet, just try to do better and try to look at what you're eating, where your food has come from, and how he has been it has been produced. Uh, one of our in the pipeline development, if you like it, is that we've been obviously selling meat boxes and, and we've been using couriers, uh, which are not refrigerated, but the system that we use in our meat box allow the meat to stay cool for uh, up to 48 hours. And we also have a wholesale section that we supply in few, uh, few restaurants. For instance, we supply silo which is the only zero waste restaurant in london and yeah. i think in the world and also we supplying thomas frank with some of the uh the places that they have they are trying to achieve uh like a really a, um uh, environmental friendly uh, yeah. uh, canteen for corporates and one of the clients we are supplying and and from the learning that we have from these three different places we're now working on a concept to uh, to hopefully very soon implement our uh, zero plastic, zero emission delivery to restaurants and chefs in London. So oh, wow. within within I think few few months we would we would start that as well, which I'm very excited about. Wow, a huge amount in the pipeline then from an innovation point of view. <laughs> yeah. Brilliant. So you mentioned then the award, the digital award that you got for um, Regenerary. Can you just bring that to life for us a little bit? What is that? I must say that you were very surprised and really humbled by receiving the Great British Farming Awards because uh, I personally think that the real heroes are the farmers who are doing the really, really hard work. What we are doing here is that we're just communicating what they are doing with the with, you know, with, with the consumers, they should receive the award. But uh, talking about Regenerary, uh, which they kindly gave us the award for, it, uh, Glenn actually came with the idea that, okay, uh, why is it that in January, where we are in Northern Europe, we should be encouraged to eat certain foods that they don't even grow in Northern Europe. They're all being airshipped from miles and miles away from South America, et cetera, et cetera, from industrial farms. And they're coming to the UK and we're eating them, thinking that, or be encouraged to eat them, thinking that, okay, as long as I don't eat meat, this is going to be good for the plants. Mm -hmm. And then and then we had discussion and, and he came with the idea of saying that, why instead of veganuary, we don't say regenerary. So instead of people eliminating one diet and just follow without looking what they're going just stick to what they are happy to eat but do better so eat from regenerative farms from regeneratively produced farms uh, do more local and seasonal yeah. uh, have food that has the least air mines uh, we did a started it two years ago so in four weeks we had about one million impression on our first campaign at about four thousand shares and hate and like and comments and and the discussion kind of yeah. started not all of them was positive but i think any discussions is good because yeah. more minds comes 
into contribution to any discussions, the more the more contribution, the better the outcome. And then the second year last year, it was even better than first year. I think this year, with all of what is happening in the world, with the summit in Glasgow, with you know all of the world leaders now thinking, you know, okay, how can we solve this problem? This is actually the really, really good moment for anyone who is interested in the food and and is really keen to do better to think about it. And we are going to work on this regenerative, as as you can imagine, better than last previous years. And uh, and few people are coming on board to support it as well. But all we say is that okay, do what you are happy to do, yeah, uh, your choice. But try to improve it. Try not to go with the you know industrial farming. Doesn't matter yeah. if it's beef is as bad as vegetable if it's not grown correctly. Yeah. Farshad, a huge thank you from Team TFP and the 2021 Summit audience for sharing your experiences, your knowledge and the journey to bring to market an offer to appeal to those consumers still looking to enjoy animal based proteins, but also have environmental impact and conscious consumption front of mind. So thank you so much for joining us today. A really thought provoking discussion. Thank you so much for having me. It was a pleasure to be on your program. Thanks, Josh, very much. Thank you. Bye-bye.